Hi everyone and welcome back to today's session on mindfulness and how mindfulness can help us. Before we start today's session, let's think about what we learned last time. So we'll do a quick recap. So we learned about our prefrontal cortex and what a, an important part of our brain it is. It helps us to concentrate, to make good choices and to be our best. Um, we saw Tom Daly using his prefrontal cortex, didn't we? We also talked about our mind and our mind and how it can move around and how it can even time travel. And we learned that mindfulness is about training our mind to be where we want it to be. And we can use our breath to help us uh, with our mind training. So today's session uh, is going to be uh, mainly about attention. So we're learning about attention, what it is and how mindfulness can help us to improve our attention. So I'm going to use my torch to explain about attention. So just move out the way so you can see. So sometimes when we need to pay attention, it can be on something very small. So our attention can be quite focused and small. So if I was looking at these pretty flowers here, my attention would just be on the flowers. So it's quite a small area. It's one thing just focused on that. However, sometimes my attention needs to be on lots of different things. It can move around and it's, it it's gets bigger, wider. So for example, if you're in the playground, lots going on at school, very noisy, lots of action. So your mind is all over the place really, isn't it? It's focused in lots of different places, lots going on, lots of things to look at and distractions. Whereas if you get back in the classroom, then if you're listening to your teacher or you're focused on a very um, difficult piece of work or something that you really need to be focused on, then it becomes small again. So it can go from being very, very small on one particular thing, or it can be very big. So um, attention is really important and we can um, be in charge of our attention and where it goes. So it might be uh, another example I could use is if you're on a bicycle and if you're out on the road cycling, your attention needs to be all around like the torchlight was wide, wasn't it? So your attention needs to be everywhere to be safe. Whereas if your attention was very small and just on the handlebars, that's not going to be very good, is it? You're not going to last very long because it's not safe and your attention needs to be everywhere. So we're going to also talk about today the fact that our attention is a bit like a puppy. Sounds a bit strange, doesn't it? So um, our mind, like a puppy, likes to wander off and it can also make messes. So our minds can get in a muddle and make a mess of things. Our minds can also bring back things we don't want. So if you're trying to focus on your work, sometimes from nowhere, you could just have a memory. So it's like your mind's brought back something you didn't want. Um, so to help me explain this, I'm going to use my dog as an example. My dog's called Lula. She's two now, but she obviously was a puppy. So I'm going to show you a picture of her to start with. So let's get a picture of Lula. So let's find Lula. Here's my Lula file and here's a picture of me with Lula. So this isn't her now, she's a lot bigger, I couldn't pick her up now, but she was little then and she was very, very sweet. But she did need a bit of training because she often did things she shouldn't. So let's have another look at um, a picture of Lula doing something she shouldn't. So where is Lula? Let's take a look at Lula bringing back something she shouldn't. Can you see that? Oh dear, she has brought back some pants. Definitely didn't want those. So like our mind, like I said, it can bring back things we don't want, like a puppy. Um, let's have a look at what else Lula gets up to when she was a puppy. Um, so what else did she do? Lula, what else did you do, Lula? Ah, this one. Yes, there we go. She made messes. So she certainly made a mess of this shoe. And like I said before, our minds can make messes. So our minds can get in a muddle, too much going on, too many thoughts, and it all gets a bit of a mess. So a bit like a puppy making a mess. So like I said, um, we can also train our minds like a puppy. Um, so when P Lula was small, we had to train her to do all the things we want her to do. So let me show you a picture of Lula. And here she is. So here's, uh, this is actually a video of Lula. So this is uh, us training Lula. So let's have a look. So you can sit. see she doesn't do sit. it straight away. Sit. My husband's telling her to sit. Lula. And sit. she's being distracted looking around. Ooh, but she did do it. So cool. there cool. we go. Cool. Again, she's being distracted. Cool. 
Oh. And then she yeah, gave her yeah. form. So that okay. was a, a good example of training. So we didn't um, just get Lula and she knew what to do. We had to train her. So you can do the same with your mind. And the good news is you can train your mind. So every time you feel it wandering off like a puppy, we're learning in mindfulness to bring it back to where we want it to be in order to focus, to use our prefrontal cortex. And then we can use um, our prefrontal cortex to be our best and make good choices. So we talk a bit about, you know, we've talked about mindfulness. I've used this word a lot, but what does it really mean? What does it mean if you're doing something mindfully? So if you're being mindful, it means you're being in the moment, you're really focused and you're paying attention. And the opposite of that is being mindless. So I've got some pictures that I'm going to show you and we're going to see what it means to be mindful. So in these pictures, some of the people in the pictures are being very mindful and some of them are not, they're being mindless. So let me find the picture for you and let's see if we can look at it together and find out who's being mindful and who is not. Here we go. So if you look at this picture, you can, I'll give you a few moments to look at all the pictures and just have a little look at them really closely. Who's being mindful in those pictures and who is being mindless? So who is paying attention? Who is really focused? Who is in the moment? Who is the opposite? Who's distracted and not in the moment? So let's talk through. If you see this person here on the tightrope, I think for sure that person is being very mindful. That person is focused on the uh, tightrope. They're focused on their body and being balanced. They're probably taking deep breaths to steady themselves, like we talked about Tom Daly did. It's a really good way to steady yourself. Now, if a dog ran past or a squirrel ran up the tree and that person was distracted, immediately I think they would definitely fall off because they've lost focus, they've lost, lost concentration. So that person's definitely being mindful. Now, if we move along to the next picture, this child here is being very mindless. His uh, attention, like that puppy, has wandered off. It's gone out the window and uh, he's been distracted. His mind is probably wandering all over the place and he's not focused on the teacher. So really, his torchlight of attention should be on that teacher and be very small listening to the teacher in that moment. But he's not. So he's being a bit mindless, isn't he? So moving on to these two ladies here, to me, yes, they are very focused on one thing and their torchlight is on that phone, but really they're not in the moment they're in, are they? They're being distracted by their phones. So they're not paying attention to what's happening around them in that moment. This child here, about to hopefully save a penalty, very much being mindful, very much in the moment, focused on that ball, focused on where it's going, focused on this body, what's gonna do in that moment. So even if a dog ran across the field or one of his friends shouted his name, he wouldn't notice because he's so in that moment, really focused on that ball, very much being mindful. Um, I think the child probably kicking the ball is being extremely mindful as well, really focused on that ball, where it's going to go in the goal and hopefully score a goal. So move on to the next one. Pretty obvious here. They're being very distracted, aren't they? They're being mindless. They're not enjoying their hug. They're being distracted by their phones. And phones can be very distracting, can't they? They can take you off in all sorts of places. And then suddenly you look up and you think, oh, you'd almost forgotten where you were. And this happens. I've seen people walk along and almost bump into lampposts. I've probably done it myself when we're totally distracted by our phones. We're not in the moment. We're not focused on what's happening around us. Um, so yeah, being on your phones can definitely make you a bit mindless. And finally, this picture here, this person I think is very mindful, enjoying a beautiful view. And often when we're watching something beautiful like a sunset or feeling really excited or watching fireworks something really great we're very much in the moment we're very present and that's often why we remember these um wonderful things we do that, that are very special because we're present we're focused and we're in the moment so there you go there's some examples of people being mindful and mindless so the good news is mindfulness is going to help us uh, to become more focused. If, so we will be in the moment, we will be present. So what we talked about last time is that we used our breath, didn't we, to get in the moment because we can't breathe in the future, we can't breathe in the past. So when we use our breath, we're very much focused on what we're doing right now. It helps us to bring us into the moment. So we're going to learn a new breathing practice today. And it's a funny one. It's called Rocks and Socks. So we're gonna use our hands, because our hands, if we're doing something with our hands, it, it makes it a little bit easier to focus on our breathing. 
So when we take a nice deep breath in, we're going to scrunch up our hands and even squeeze our whole body like a rock, become solid like a rock. And as we breathe out through our mouth, we let it, everything be floppy like a floppy sock. And if you think when you pick up a floppy sock, it's all relaxed, there's no, no tension, so it's all floppy. So let's try it again as you breathe in. Squeeze like a rock, breathe out, floppy like a sock. So we're going to do that three times together, really focusing on your breath, expanding your belly. Remember, we talked about those lovely belly breaths last time. They're really good for helping us to be calm as well. So let's go for it. So breathing in, eyes closed. Tense like a rock, hard and uh, solid. And then breathe out. Floppy sock. Breathe in. Tense like a rock. Squeeze. Breathe out, floppy sock. Breathe in, tense like a rock. Breathe out, become floppy <laughs> like a sock. So just notice how you feel now. I know I feel much more relaxed and uh, calm after doing that. So well done for giving that a go. So that's the end of today's session. So uh, let's think about what we've learned today. We've learned. Uh, through me showing you the torch that our attention can be very very small on one thing at one time or it can be quite big on different things um, so it can be much wider and it can take in lots of different things we learned that our attention is a bit like a puppy so it can wander off when we don't want it to it can get in a muddle and make messes and it can bring back things we don't want i.e memories we don't want thoughts we don't want so by training our mind with our mindfulness, it's like training a puppy. And we saw the video, didn't we, of my puppy being trained. If we do it again and again and repeat and try again, then we learn to be mindful, just like the puppy learns to come back. Our minds can learn to come back when they're distracted. And then we learn a new breathing practice, didn't we? As well as learning what mindful, being mindful is and mindless. So being mindful is about being in the present moment, isn't it? And uh, paying attention, really focused on what you're doing in that moment. And the opposite is mindlessness. So it's a bit um, like the pictures we saw of people looking out the window, looking at their phones, being distracted. So as I mentioned, we learned a new breathing practice, didn't we? Rocks and socks, breathing in and squeezing everything, being tense and breathing out and relaxing. Brilliant, well done. So we've learned quite a lot again today. So what I'd like you to do and focus on uh, before our next session is maybe trying the rocks and socks. So you don't have to do it like this. You could just do it on your lap. So I'd like to ask you, so next time you notice yourself getting very angry about something, you could be upset about something or just generally feeling and feeling you don't want and it's becoming too strong. So too upset, too worried, too angry then I'd like you to try your rocks and socks. So maybe just have your hands on your lap and as you breathe in, tense your hands and as you breathe out, relax them. And maybe do that three times and just see if you notice a difference. So we're all, um, if you're in the house with your family and um, you're getting a bit annoyed or you have an argument with someone in your house, just maybe take yourself away and do some of the rocks and socks breathing. Or if you wanted to, you could count your breaths like we did last time whatever you find easier because that will just help you to feel calmer just focus on what you're doing which is breathing and try and take your thoughts away from um, up in your mind and just focusing on your breathing so have a go see how that makes you feel if you're getting too angry upset or worried about anything all right so well done for today and I really look forward to seeing you the next session and um, take care and see you soon bye